But notice that um, if we're expanding, then this fraction would be bigger than 1, and the natural log would be positive, and delta s would be positive. Well, that's what we said before. Um, entropy is increasing in a free expansion. Now, here's a kind of a subtle problem. What's the delta s of the surroundings here? That's a pretty hard question. Uh, I'll give you a few seconds to think about this just so the answer will make a bigger impact. But let's think for, about this for a few seconds. What would be the delta s of the surroundings here? I mean, I'd want to say that generally it would be the opposite of that, but it seems like in this case, it's like a closed system and the surroundings are being affected. You are on the exact right path. What you just said is the exact thing that should give you the answer. So then it's equal to zero, maybe? That's really good. All right, I, I, most people don't figure that out. That's good that you figured that out. Just think about it in terms of common sense terms. This is a closed box. Mm -hmm. uh, it, has, it is not interacting with the outside world at all. The only thing that's changed here is the gas has moved from here to here. But the surroundings hasn't been changed in any way. It hasn't become more ordered or disordered. Mm -hmm. More technically, we can see clearly the gas is not doing work on the surroundings yeah. um, because it's not pushing against anything. Remember, um, it's just in this box. It's not touching the surroundings. Uh, I, I should have emphasized that before. How do we know this is not doing work? Um, I should have emphasized this before. Free expansion means we're expanding into a vacuum. Okay. There was a vacuum here before. Well, so it's not pushing against anything. Yeah. So it doesn't have to exert any force. It's not exerting any force on this because there is no this here. Yeah. There's nothing to push against. So it's not doing any work. And it's not exchanging any heat with the surroundings because that's the definition of adiabatic. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's not doing work on the surroundings and it's not exchanging heat with the surroundings, um, nothing is happening to the surroundings. So delta S there would be zero. Mm -hmm. So what can we say about the delta S for the universe? equal to the S of the gas? That's right. It would be this plus this, but this is zero. Mm -hmm. So for a free expansion, would the delta S be positive, negative, or zero? Of the universe? Yeah. Um, it would be positive. This is going to come out to be positive, since yeah. this fraction is bigger than uh, one. This will come out to be a positive number. So we would say that the universe's entropy is increasing. Now, is that what the second law of thermodynamics would have predicted here? Yeah. And yeah, why, why does the second law predict an increase of entropy here and not over here? Um, because this is an irreversible process. That's right. So this was a really good way for us to see the difference of uh, what the second law of thermodynamics says about reversible and irreversible processes. Mm -hmm. In our reversible processes, the delta S of the universe is always zero, but for this irreversible process, entropy of the universe went up. And let, let's go back to something you mentioned a second ago. You said, gee, my first instinct here is to think that this delta S would just cancel this one. Uh, but then you saw that that wasn't right um, in, in this case, because there was actually no effect on the surroundings here. And that's the reason why entropy could go up. Entropy was going up for the gas, and it was not counterbalanced by the entropy of the surroundings. So overall, the entropy went up. Whereas in the reversible processes, whatever happens to the entropy of the system is always counterbalanced by what's happening to the entropy of the surroundings. Right. And therefore, the delta S is going to be zero. Uh, again, I just want to emphasize, if you had tried to use this formula over here, we would have gotten it all wrong. You would have plugged in Q equals zero and thought that you were in this case. Yeah. So we don't want to confuse regular old adiabatic and adiabatic free expansion. And that's the reason, so it might have seemed a little weird that all the time in, in the session today, I've kept emphasizing that this is only for, I've kept emphasizing this is only for reversible processes. And that might have seemed a little weird because I kept saying, well, we can still use it in all these other cases um, because we can imagine a reversible process. Uh, but there, we, we're not, uh, but in this case, it makes a big difference that you can't use that formula. Yeah. So taking a look at the handout. All right, so we just went over the bottom of the handouts, mm -hmm. um, the uh, differences between all these special cases. And again, the whole point of this is to see what happens to the delta S of the universe in each case, and to see that they're always doing what's expected based on the second law of uh, thermodynamics. Once again, something that students are usually um, a little too lazy to do that really messes them up is they don't put in the subscripts. And even when I was talking today, I got lazy a lot, and I would say things like, the entropy went up, or the entropy went down, but I really shouldn't say that. I should always say whose entropy. It's very important to say, are you focusing on universe, system, or surroundings? And of course, in these problems, the system is the gas. So we want to focus on the gas, on the surroundings, and the universe.
that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I hope it makes sense, but you can see it takes some practice to avoid getting confused about those problems. Well, let's see if we can squeeze in one more idea. So let's say that the process from A to B is adiabatic. And the question is, what's delta S for the process from A to C and from C to B? So let's see if we can work that out. OK, well, we know it's equal to um, the delta S from A to B. Yeah. So um, the delta S for adiabatic. Zero. Right. So the delta S for A to C would be zero. All right, very good. I thought that was going to be harder, but that's right. Okay. okay. You got that. <laughs> and the reason that delta S for adiabatic is equal to zero is because Q is equal to zero. There's no heat exchange. Right. Okay. And yes. is, this the, is this the reversible or irreversible type? That's the reversible type. How do we know? Because otherwise we couldn't put it on a PV curve in the, fir uh, in the first place. Yeah. Anytime we're drawing a PV curve, it's taken for granted that it's a reversible process. They don't tell you that separately. So we can use the formula for reversible processes over here. And we know that all the, there's not going to be any heat exchange at all. So all these little heats would be 0. So this delta S would be 0. Um, well, this has the same starting and ending points as AB. So it also has an entropy change of 0. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.